In this video, let's let's understand one of the repeatedly asked question and one of the hormones which is secreted from the posterior pituitary and that's oxytocin. Okay, so oxytocin, even though it is secreted from the posterior pituitary, but it is synthesized primarily in a nucleus which is called as the paraventricular nucleus and this nucleus is present in the hypothalamus. And to be more specific, it is synthesized in the cell bodies of what is called as the magnocellular neurons. Okay, so the synthesis is taking place in the hypothalamus. So once the synthesis is taken place through these neurons, this hormone is transported to the posterior pituitary. And this pathway which is connecting the hypothalamus to the pituitary is what is called as hypothalamo hypophyseal tract. Okay, it is called as hypothalamo hypophyseal tract. So remember, oxytocin is primarily synthesized in the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus to be more specific in the cell bodies of what is called as the magnocellular neurons. Now, similar to ADH, it is also secreted in the form of a precursor molecule which goes by the name pre-prooxyphysin. Okay, this is a brief introduction regarding oxytocin. Next, let's understand what are the factors which increase the oxytocin secretion and what are the factors which inhibit the oxytocin secretion. The most important factor is uh, which stimulates the oxytocin secretion is suckling of the baby during the breastfeeding. Second is even the sound and sight of the baby, not just suckling. When the lactating mothers, they see their babies or they hear the sound from their babies, even then there is an increase in the secretion of oxytocin. Next, it is also increased during the cervical dilatation which occurs during parturition or during the delivery of the baby. It's also increased during the genital stimulation in the females, especially during the coitus and more importantly when a female attends uh, orgasm also increase during ejaculation in the male. So these are the factors which stimulate the oxytocin secretion and one of the most important factor which inhibits the oxytocin secretion is stress and also the sympathetic stimulation. Now coming to the most important part of oxytocin. Now this is a question which is repeatedly asked in your exam which is called as the milk ejection reflex or it is also called as a neuroendocrine reflex or it is also called as a let down reflex. Anything can be asked, any of the three can be asked. It's called as milk ejection, neuroendocrine or a let down reflex. So for this reflex there is a stimulus and what is the stimulus? Stimulus is suckling of the baby on the, on the breast for in and around the nipple and the areola. Now that is going to stimulate the receptors there and this information via the nerves is carried to the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus, whatever oxytocin is there, it pushes that oxytocin into the posterior pituitary. Now posterior pituitary releases this oxytocin and the oxytocin is now going to act on the myoepithelial cells which are present in and around the alveoli leading to the contraction and hence leading to the ejection of the milk. So what we are supposed to write if they ask you the steps in neuroendocrine reflex or the milk ejection reflex is start with the stimulus. So what is the stimulus here? The stimulus here is suckling on the breasts or to be more specific on the nipples and the areola. So what is that going to cause? That is going to cause stimulation of the skin receptors which are present on the nipple and the areola. Now the afferent nerves which are the somatic nerves they reach the spinal cord and from the spinal cord the information goes to the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus from the hypothalamus whatever oxytocin is there that moves to the posterior pituitary and oxytocin which is produced in the posterior pituitary enters into the blood and then it causes contraction. This point is very important for you to get full marks. Contraction of what cells? Contraction of the myoepithelial cells which are surrounding the alveoli and that is going to cause milk expulsion which is also called as galactokinesis. So whenever there is suckling of the skin on, on the nipple and the areola, there is no not just secretion of oxytocin, there is also secretion of the prolactin which is occurring from the anterior pituitary and what's the function of prolactin? The function of prolactin is secretion of milk, milk into the alveolar cell. So that causes milk secretion which is called as galactopoiesis. So this is the lumen in which milk is there and these are the alveolar cells and all that. And here you can see this alveoli is surrounded by these cells which are called as myoepithelial cells which are stimulated by oxytocin and these they contract and that causes expulsion of the milk into the uh, mammary tubule and hence the milk enters into the mouth of the baby. So sometimes they can also ask you the next very important function of oxytocin which is called as the parturation reflex and remember this can be also asked as Ferguson reflex. So it's very simple. It's a very good example of what is called as a positive feedback mechanism. The baby's head is going to stretch the cervix. So the baby is going to descend down and with the descent of the baby, the baby is going to stretch the cervix which the stretch of the cervix, cervical stretch, it, it, it excites the fundic contractions. Now how does that happen? So whenever there is a cervical stretch, again these impulses are going to the hypothalamus and the hypothalamus is secreting 
uh, is synthesized oxytocin is entering into the posterior pituitary and posterior pituitary is releasing more and more of oxytocin and this oxytocin is causing the contraction of the fundus part of the uterus so whenever there is contraction of the fundus of the uterus the baby is again pushed down and with each descent of the baby there is more and more stretching of the cervix and again this process keeps on repeating until and unless there is expulsion of the baby from the uterus okay so this is one more action of oxytocin which is parturition reflex or also called as the fake sense reflex so let's say they ask you a three or a two marker question just to enumerate the actions of oxytocin so the first and foremost action which we have already studied that's the milk ejection reflex okay also called as a, a very good example of what is called as a neuroendocrine reflex second is the parturition reflex which i have just now uh, explained to you Third, which we usually don't know that it also aids in ejaculation of the semen in the males. It causes contraction of even non-pregnant uterus during the coitus, okay, more importantly during the orgasm, okay, and that aids in the sperm transportation up into the uterus and from there into the fallopian tube. So this repeated contraction and relaxation of the uterus which can occur and there is a strong orgasm that point of time, the spermatozoa, they move up very easily. And uh, very important thing is that oxytocin, apart from these things, whenever the mother is feeding the baby, it is going to increase the bond between the mother and the child. So it's also called as a bonding hormone. And because it is secreted, uh, whenever there is cuddling, hugging, or more importantly, whenever there is orgasm, which is attained at the same time between both the males and the females, and it increases the bonding even between the partners. That's why it is also called as a love hormone. Okay, this point has to be written in the last. Don't write it in the first. The first important things are milk ejection reflex, parturition reflex. Next is AIDS in ejaculation of the semen in the males. And uh, also contraction of the non-pregnant uterus during coitus, eight since sperm transportation increases mother. This has to be written in the last. Don't write much during love and all in your examinations. So these are the actions of oxytocin. Then what are the clinical uses of oxytocin? These are used as oxytocics. These are the synthetic preparation of oxytocin. They can be used in induction of the labor. They can be also used in treatment of arrest of labor. They can be also used in treatment of what is called as a postpartum hemorrhage. Thank you.